The Beast of the Field, Part 3, by K.B. Hurst. Chapter 9 Tracy walked back to her dorm, but was utterly unaware that Joshua was in the car cruising for someone to feed Anthony this late Friday afternoon. A sudden burst of air picked up, causing Tracy's hair to fly into her face. She struggled to see as her hair wrapped itself around her neck and slapped her in the eyes as she tried to push the strands of hair out of the way. As Tracy approached the street where her dorm building was, she heard a voice calling out to her. Turning, she saw Joshua waving from his car. She smiled, recognizing the handsome face from the cafe. Need a ride? He offered. Tracy laughed to herself. <laughs> yeah, nice try, guy. Uh, no, I am where I need to be. He pulled the car up closer to the curb where she was standing so he could get a closer look at her. No, <laughs> do you want to ride with me to get something to eat? He offered. I think I'll need a rain check, but, you know, call me later this week. I have my finals on Thursday. He smiled. I think I'll need a number if you want me to call you. Tracy grinned. Give me your phone. Joshua handed her his phone, forgetting the texts from his brother that had sent only moments before. Tracy looked at the phone and several messages popped up. I'm hungry, Josh. I told you today. Now. I need it. <laughs> wow. Someone's demanding. <laughs> she smiled putting her number on Joshua's phone. Joshua quickly grabbed the phone back from her. Uh, my brother, he's disabled and I'm all he has, unfortunately. Tracy nodded understandably. Well, I'm here, so talk to you later. Joshua grinned, feeling better about how his day was going. Unfortunately, he still needed to feed Anthony. Dr. Tom Hurst was eyeballing a jam measurement on his toast while sitting in his laboratory. Victor rolled his eyes. Sir, your doctor told you you are in perfect health. Why are you being so careful with the jam? I'm thinking, Victor. I have finished something and if... Uh, I don't want to share it yet. Sir, you are more than welcome to. I will not judge or complain. The last few inventions were a bit maniacal, but the one that got away still worries me, sir. I'm thinking forever young, yes. I believe it was the formula that got away from me. Now, I must make a new formula to combat it. If only I knew who took it. If only I knew if they even drank it. It wasn't your fault, Victor. These things do happen, especially when you are me. There are still people looking for me, you know. That is an understatement. I think that you should just eat the damn jam in the meantime. Dr. Tom Hurst smiled at his servant and ate the entire piece of toast. Chapter 10 What's your name? Joshua asked a pretty girl with the ice cream stand. He stood behind her and thought she looked meaty enough for Anthony. She wasn't too thin either. Anthony hated them when they were too thin. They always tasted bad to his brother. He said the thin ones were anemic. The young blonde woman turned around and looked up at Joshua, towering over her at five foot eleven. She grinned back, showing mild interest in him. Andrea. What's yours, tall, dark, and weird? She asked sarcastically. Joshua. He said, not even considering lying. Oh. Well, it's nice to meet you, Joshua. I'm going now, but enjoy your ice cream. Joshua smirked. So is that how you're going to be? <laughs> A nice guy asks you for your name, and you get offended and run off? I don't run. I'm just not interested. Joshua was hurt at the slight, but that didn't stop him. Hey, who said I was chasing you? 
Your ass is the size of a shopping cart. Enjoy your ice cream, Joshua said, walking away. He got into his car and drove off. He hadn't been amused today. Off to the side of the road, he noticed a vagrant standing by the bus stop. His brother, Anthony, would have to get what he could tonight. He pulled up to the man wearing jeans with holes in them. He looked like he was drunk, high, or both. Hey, man. You look a bit hard on your luck. Is there somewhere I can drop you? The man looked down at Joshua and didn't waste any time. He opened the car door, looked at Joshua, and got in. You got any money? The man asked Joshua. How much are we talking about? Joshua asked. Look, 20 bucks. I'll do anything for it. I'll even blow you. It isn't my favorite thing, but I'm told I have a nice mouth. Joshua shuddered at the thought that this disgusting man would suck him off for 20 bucks. Uh, no. I won't let you demean yourself that way. But there are some things I need to move at my house. If you help me, I'll give you $40 and take you wherever you want to go. The man looked Joshua up and down, not sure he believed him. When he looked at Joshua's sad brown eyes, though, he nodded. There was something about Joshua's eyes. Joshua pulled up to the house and parked in the garage. He had the man follow up to the living room. Anthony was sitting on the couch watching television. He looked at the man Joshua had brought in and scoured. Who's this? This is the guy who agreed to help us. You know, move that thing we need to move in the bedroom. Anthony just looked at Joshua. He was pissed. But if this was all he could get for now, then so be it. Yeah, I need it moved. Now. The sooner the better. The man was no longer so sure about being there anymore. He began to rethink this entire situation. Was it really that important? Did he really need his meth boost? He began to protest, but Joshua had already had a hand on the back of his shoulder. The man backed up before Joshua slammed his head into the wall. Anthony stood up and walked over to his brother as he began to punch the stranger in the face. The man tried to put up a fight, but before long, he was in the bedroom on the floor. Joshua yelled for Anthony to get the charp from the closet. And as he did, the man stood up, kicking Joshua in the groin. He curled over in pain, but now he was over it. He was pissed. Pissed at Anthony. Pissed he was now having to deal with this situation. The man looked past Joshua just as Anthony grabbed a hammer and slammed it into the man's eye. The man collapsed to the floor. Do I have to do anything? Everything myself, Anthony yelled. Fuck you. I'm sick of this shit. Do what you have to do. I'm done, Joshua yelled. Anthony bent over and sunk his teeth into the man. Within seconds, the man was a shriveled up bag of bones with skin hanging from it. His organs lumped up under his skin, and the lifeless body of the vagrant lay there on the floor. Anthony smiled at Joshua when he was finished. Do your job, brother. Stop moaning about it and help me. Joshua took a deep breath and went to get the tarp he had asked for earlier. He moved the man to the tarp and then grabbed a saw and began severing the man's head, legs, and arms from his torso. He grabbed giant plastic bags and once finished, he moved the bags to a large walk-in freezer in their basement. Luckily for Joshua, the bloodlust had no droplets that needed to be cleaned. For once, he could not worry about walls and shit all over the floor. Anthony had spared him that, at least. Anthony was laughing upstairs. Music was playing now. He was full and in a good mood. He was no longer sickly and yellow. Joshua watched his brother as he popped a couple of the pills he had received from his doctor earlier. Now the bastard wanted to party. <laughs> Isn't life grand? Anthony asked, turning up the music he had put on. Joshua nodded, feeling happy that at least for a few days his brother would be happier and less of a burden. Dr. Tom Hurst sat watching the news. It was on while he sat in his big chair. The cops had found a body near one of the marshes. It was a young college student they had been looking for. Only, her head was missing. 
and so were her legs and arms. But the tattoo on her hip, which was positively identified by her sister, showed that it was indeed her body. Sandy Boyer had most of the blood drained from her body, according to the police. That's all they really said, though. They were not trying to give too much away and wondered if animals had done it till they noticed the cut marks were almost like a blade. Dr. Tom Hurst sat in his chair. Blood drained? He looked at Victor, who was standing nearby watching the news. They both had the same conclusion. Whoever was killing these young students was drinking their blood. It's time for me to get to work. The beast must be born now, so it can stop this madman's work. Victor looked at Dr. Tom Hurst. Are you sure that it's your formula? Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. The thing to do now is to finish my beast. It will need to be finished within the next few days. I'll need someone to help me. Victor, can you send a letter to Tracy Van Buren? I'm going to propose something to her. Victor nodded. Now aware that the plans Dr. Tom Hurst had in mind would finally be put into action for the betterment of mankind and for the aging Dr. Tom Hurst. To be continued. <laughs>